Today is a day I never could have imagined in my service as a member of the U.S. House. And I believe it's a day no American could have imagined. Lawmakers and law enforcement um, continue to kind of take a almost dismissive approach to online organizing, particularly when it comes to extremism. It can result in terrifying situations like we saw at the Capitol on January 6th. Before the protest, uh, we saw users sharing maps of entry points into the U.S. Capitol. You know, we saw discussions of the weapon laws that exist in Washington, D.C., and different ways to potentially get around those weapon laws. So a nonstop drumbeat of users inciting each other to violence against people that they perceive as antithetical to their causes. Everything we saw online kind of came true. And I will say that a uh, majority of the um, domestic terrorism uh, cases that we've investigated uh, are motivated by some version of what you might call white supremacist I violence, but it includes other things as well. Yesterday's scene at the Capitol was disturbing, to be quite honest. Swastikas and Confederate flags, nooses and automatic rifles do not represent who we are as Michiganders. Groups primarily recruit, organize, and converse with each other using social media. And a lot of them have moved on to alternative social media platforms. Uh, we're talking about things like Parler, Gab, um, MeWe, Wimkin. Uh, there's a, a whole host of different tech platforms with funny sounding names that promise users very limited uh, and very minimal moderation. <laughs> see violence but if it has to be done it has to be done now more than ever it is important for us to fully come to grips with the threat that disinformation poses to the stability of our country and our social society and if we don't come to grips with that my fear is that we will see more events like this going forward in the future